Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, it's new early childhood apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today I want to talk about some new and not so new early childhood apps that I find very useful. Just recently I did professional development with a, a local school district and one of the groups I worked with was in early childhood and I thought it was time for us to go back and really think about some new early childhood apps that can work both in the classroom and at home. And so here it is. Uh, the first app I want to talk about is called Dualcast, and Dualcast has been highlighted in a number of places, and I really like what this app does. What this app does is it helps young kids and even older kids to start drawing, so it's designed with a few things in mind. The first thing is to help kids start drawing by giving them ideas, and there's a dif different number of prompts every time you do this. And the second thing is it records them as they go along, so it really helps promotes, promote oral language. So, so let's see what it looks like. Um, if we go into it, you can see that it has a prompt, and the prompt is both oral it's written, which is less relevant at the early childhood phase, but it connects words with print. And then there's a visual prompt, in this case, the boot. So you can start drawing, and I will choose this one. And now what you will see is, as I start going, there's a timer here, which means without actually having to press anything, again, that's great for early childhood, our voices are recorded as we work through this. So, you don't just get the end product, you actually get the thinking that's going along. This is going to be my Uncle Jesse. So, I can start drawing, that's his legs, that's his body, and that's his head. And now, I want to make the boots. I think that they will be very good in this orange almost rust and we need two eyes and a mouth and that's my uncle and now I can stop it and now if I okay it it is saved As I start going, there's a timer here. and so now anybody including myself can watch this and see what I was thinking about and the process of creating so, you don't just get the end. And you can stop it at any time. You can see the cat, when he looks at you, it's off. When he looks back on, product, you actually get the thinking that's going along. This is going to be my own. So this, this one is very simple. It allows you really to understand what your kids are actually thinking as they're drawing and especially early on when it's not clear exactly what they drew now they have ideas they have a palette of colors that is simple but manageable and you can hear what they're thinking so it's promoting creativity and at the same time it's promoting oral language development and letting you have a window into their creative process without actually being there at every minute of the day so if you have a set of iPad or if you're at home and you're working with a, a small group or even one child, here is a way to capture what they're doing and to promote that creativity. And you can see every time I will go here, it'll have different ones and you can see that I have a fridge and now my drawings are here and you can go back to them and this is one I made earlier. And you can also start with an empty page. So you don't have to use the prompt, but it's very nice to use the prompt because that helps get some new ideas and get things going. So this one, is called Doodlecast, highly recommended, fairly new. I wanted to start with Curious George. Curious George is one of my personal favorite characters, especially in its new incarnation. Um, there is a Curious George app that allows you to read the Curious George books and you get one book free, the rest of them you have to pay for. But this is the original book and I think that that's a really nice production and even if you just want to introduce kids to Curious George, this is a great way. It's a free, uh, it's a free book and you can see that you can read it to yourself or you can read it to kids. You can even project it to uh, the projector in front of a whole room of uh, K-12 
kids, and you just scroll through the book. I love the scrolling motion. This is the original drawing and all that. It will read to you and highlight the phrases as it goes along, which is nice as well. You can, of course, uh, mark the page you're on and you can just scroll through the whole book and search. As I said, there's a library where you can purchase uh, the other Curious George books, so there's a growing number of those available, but again, that's for pay. If you have a little bit of a budget, that might not be a bad idea because you can expose kids for, for a fairly short or for a fairly small amount of money to a lot of the Curious Bo uh, George books, but uh, you don't have to. You're still getting, I think, your money's worth if it's free. Um, so that's a Curious Reader. Uh, there's a new app that came out called Curious World based on Curious George and it allows creativity and exploration in a variety of ways and again there's a portion of it that is free and a portion that is paid. So this is Curious World and now you can do quite a bit inside Curious World. There's plenty to explore with Mackenzie and Izzy. Time to play. So, you can see, for example, just in the games, there, there are a number of games. This is a puzzle game. These are puzzles. My favorite piece here is that ability to create our own puzzle, and we'll create a puzzle out of, our, uh, of the back of our studio. And you can see you can create a four-piece puzzle, a nine-piece puzzle, or a 16-piece puzzle. The 16-piece puzzle is a little more complicated. But you can see how you can quickly do this. And uh, kids will be very, uh, very happy to create. And that's the most fun, I think, is they can actually create a puzzle with their own faces. One child or multiple kids in the picture. And then they can get through and do the puzzle. We'll do that quickly just so you can see what it looks like at the end. It was getting a little hard for me with 16 pieces. So, um, Great puzzle. so you can see that immediately gets there and they can make as many of those as they want. They have to remake them every time. So that's one thing you can do and I think that's fantastic. Um, I got for free the Dino Discovery Pack. It comes for free right now with the app. It's, it may change in the future, but right now that's it. And you can see that besides fine animations, there are lots of activities. So, uh, for example, in this activity, you make this dinosaur roar. let's make the dinosaur roar. Buttons to change the sound of your roar. So I record my own voice. Three, two, one. Roar. I thought that was very convincing, by the way. Roar. roar. But now you can change it. This slows it down. Roar. 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 So, again, very Roar. playful. Kids Roar. can enjoy this, but also in the process, get used to recording their voice and playing with the device. There's the ability to uncover the bones, so you dig around the in the sandbox. It only ate plants. And this is my favorite part of this. As you're going through, it adds information and talks to you. So it, for example, talks here about the fact that triceratops are herbivores. So it provides that scientific um, vocabulary that is so important for kids' development. And you can see that I can uncover this very quickly here if I'm really dedicated to the cause. And then, or had a lot of bones. then you get the opportunity to actually build it. It had a large bony frill on its head and three sharp horns. And the information keeps flowing very slowly, but it adds to what you already know. So it's not just a puzzle, but there's actually an opportunity to learn about the, in this case, the dinosaurs. Text triceratops from bigger meat-eating dinosaurs. So you, you can do multiple dinosaurs like that, and again, that, that is one way to look at it. And you can see that there are lots of other activities. This is one of my favorite things. When you get that big person, small person icon, it means that this is 
offline activity that can be shared. So here, here you can actually ask an adult the instructions and help you make these dinosaur puppets. Play the video to see how these puppets are put together. So there's actually a piece you can uh, print from the iPad straight to a printer and you can do this in color of course and then there are directions about how to fold it, cut it and fold it to make the dinosaur so there's a short movie. So this app really has multiple activities that would help teach and interact with young children and really help them understand different topics and get them really excited about different topics which is a really important entry point as we get into things. Uh, again, the thing that I would advise you is download this app, play with it, see where it fits in your curriculum and what are the things that you can do with it. Uh, you can see that there are right now two packs but uh, I expect that with time they'll add packs and uh, allow to address different topics. So today we talked about some wonderful new apps and at least Nearpod who's been a, who, that's been around for quite a while uh, that's a little bit older but I think all can be fantastically used in the early childhood classroom and I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom. <laughs>